Hi, everybody. Welcome to Trace 3 TV. I'm Sandy Salty, CMO. January 2024 marked an important milestone in the evolution of our data and analytics portfolio. Our passion for enabling our clients to harness the power of data and turn it into insights and decision making has been further fueled by our latest acquisition of Tailwind, a leader in the data space. Joining me to celebrate this latest edition is Trace B, Vice President of Data and Analytics, Asher Lohman. Welcome, Asher. Hi, Sandy. Thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. It's great to have you. Asher, in your words, Dinga is the new soil. Why? That has to be one of my most favorite metaphors uh, for data. Uh, and it's because it draws on this like very clear parallel between soil and agriculture, which is really foundation to humanity. And now we have this role of, on the digital side of data playing that role. If it's things like bringing in growth and fertility for an organization, it has to be cultivated and cared for just like soil in order to get value out of it. Uh, and it really becomes that resource for innovation. And, and because of that, I, I feel like the parallel is just so clear and easy for people to understand. Agree. And it's certainly the ultimate growth lover of current day business. And as we know, also, it, data is a critical gateway to leverage AI. So if data is the new soil, what is AI? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. And, and AI really becomes that enhancer of growth. So if you think about how do we take advantage of this new intelligence, this new capability to continue cultivating the use of data, uh, it's another tool in our tool belt. So similar to like a piece of farming equipment that we would use on our soil, we now have this tool available to us to enhance and pull insights out of our information that we may not have been able to do before uh, historically. And also gives us the ability to adapt and to learn and to try new things. And really, it becomes that catalyst for continuing growth, continuing advancement, not only of humanity, um, but of your business. Well said. Why is a data analytics strategy and implementation required to power AI? Yeah, I think that's a great question and, and one that we talk to lots of customers about because without this strategy, this underlying goal and objective for your data, you really can't take advantage of what some of these newer capabilities of technology are, are offering. Things like preparing your data, um, making sure that data is of good quality and of good standards to be able to do that. Um, I tell a lot of the customers I speak with, we laugh because most large enterprises, their data quality is not in good shape. We're talking about 90 plus percent uh, and have, have problems with it to the fact that they can't even use some of these more modern tools to get insights out of it. So really kind of going back to the basics, building a strategy and a roadmap that then defines what are those use cases I'm going to use AI for? What are those use cases I'm even going to use my data for? And then driving forward and, and going back to sources and, and cleaning that up is critical. You also have a huge component of governance around that. Uh, a lot of our customers in the healthcare space or in the financial services space have some very strong compliance regulations that they have to uh, attribute to. So because of that, we need to make sure that data quality is good, that it's meeting regulatory standards. And then at the, at the end of the day, is that platform that I'm running my information on scalable and able to be managed in a way that the artificial intelligence or the machine learning can actually take advantage of it? Okay, now let's talk a little bit about Tailwind. Uh, Trace 3's thought leadership and our ability to showcase the future uh, is, is one part of our unique value to this industry. But our prowess um, in seeing and showcasing emerging trends has always been bolstered by our ability to bring those trends to fruition for our clients and our partners. The Tailwind Edition augments our muscle in the data space, particularly from a practitioner perspective. Tell us about the makeup of Tailwind Talent. The Tailwind Talent is, bar none, some of the best uh, that I've ever had a chance to work with in my career. Uh, and I'm so glad that they're a part of the Trace3 organization now. We've got everything from the most strong data analysts building a, a reporting and insight mechanisms for customers through dashboards and reports. We've got some of the best data engineering talent utilizing the latest and greatest in technologies to connect the dots between source systems and our analytical platforms. 
And then on the other side, we've got these architects that are thinking about what's coming next, the bigger things, the AI capabilities, the machine learning capabilities that we're going to bring to our customers to unlock that value. And uh, the talent that they've brought over has really escalated our organization. Uh, and I, like I said, I'm really glad they're part of us today. Me too. And what kind of clients do they serve, Asher? The great thing is it's similar to Trace 3. It, it's across a wide variety of industries and swaths. Um, some great healthcare examples and use cases, uh, some great IP in the healthcare space that, I, that we're going to definitely be bringing to our current customers and to the market. But in addition to that, across manufacturing, across financial services, across consumer and retail industries, they have had their hands in a lot of different, really complex projects over the years. And now we have that talent on our team. So, so what does our data and analytics portfolio look like now? It's a very similar portfolio, which is, which is a great dovetail into Trace3's existing data and analytics team. Uh, we're focusing on the modern data stack and continuing to drive uh, that expertise. Things like within the Microsoft stack, bringing forward Azure Fabric, Microsoft Fabric, uh, Microsoft Power BI, those types of capabilities at the next level to our customers. Diving deep into Snowflake in that modern data platform and then bringing in Databricks um, as another very strong partner. Now we're across the stack, have expertise very deep in areas that may not have been as deep before. Love that. Um, so let's switch gears for a minute. In 2022, the Detroit Lions announced their partnership with Trace Suite as their official analytics partner. What have we done with the Detroit Lions? The Detroit Lions story is, is one of my favorites. I mean, the ability to bring them to becoming the number one fan experience NFL team for the last season, uh, I feel like was really attributed to the work that we were able to give them behind the scenes, connecting the dots between 12 extraneous data sources that by themselves may have shown some value, but together really gave them a clear picture every game day of what was going on in and around Ford Field so they can make decisions on the fly. In addition to that, it gave them other insights that they weren't even expecting, the ability to understand how tickets were being redeemed and other things that they didn't have those insights before. So for us, it was able to give them a place and the data and the capability to make those decisions that really have escalated them as a premier uh, sports team in the industry. Yeah, it's one of the best stories in the industry right now from my perspective. So I'd like to get back to the AI topic for a bit. Um, when you consider the history of our business, there were so many chapters that were critical to shaping Trace 3 as the go-to for AI strategy and implementation. I'm going to go through some of those inflection points in our history, and I'd like you to shed light on how critical they were in our evolution towards being a leader in AI from your perspective. And our scale will be one for not critical, two for moderately critical to shaping our current AI prowess, and three for highly critical. Are, are you ready to, to have a little bit of fun Let's with me? Let's do it. Let's jump in. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So launching an innovation and research division in 2012, how important is that milestone to a company who needs to empower clients to leverage AI? Yeah, I think that one to me is highly critical. That's got to be a three in my book. Yeah. Um, you know, having that early investment in innovation into research is critical to staying ahead, especially in this space and understanding what that AI landscape looks like. Um, without having that how can we empower our clients to understand what's coming next and be at that forefront of innovation? Okay, I'm going to keep leading the witness here. What about having a management consulting team? Sure. Again, um, I would say that's on the moderately critical side. You know, I'll give it a two, two plus, because you know, that consulting aspect plays, again, a crucial role in understanding what a client's business can do, what it needs, the areas where AI can deliver that most impact. Um, we have to be able to kind of connect the dots on the people, the process, and the technology uh, outside of just understanding what's coming next from a technology point of view. And uh, that's where our management consulting team shines. Totally. And and the program management associated with For sure. adopting innovation of any kind is not trivial. I mean, that's, that's pretty complex. Um, what about having infrastructure capabilities? Yeah, I, that's, that's going to be in that moderately to high critical space as well, that two, two plus. And it's interesting if in this space, um, 
having just infrastructure chops is one thing, but you have to be able to connect the dots between the infrastructure and now the AI software and those algorithms and things that build the, the solution for an organization. So focusing on the infrastructure alone only gets you part of the way there. So you have to understand that. I think bolting on management consulting, bolting on the innovation front that we've talked about so far together now starts to paint a pretty good picture. Yeah. Um, having verticalization expertise, in other words, very deep industry-specific knowledge with dedicated teams like we do in healthcare and financial services, for example. Absolutely. To me, that's highly critical. You know, having understanding those spaces intimately and having people that are focused day in and day out on those those very specific verticals like healthcare and financial services and manufacturing and retail, kind of those ones that in sports and entertainment, uh, having those all together um, and understanding them intimately makes a big difference when we can go and position technologies to them and new solutions that will actually help drive adoption in their in their organization or for them to feel comfortable bringing us problems. We work, we're working with a large healthcare company right now um, on some machine learning capabilities around securing patient data. And that to me is critical that we understand the, the complex regulatory environment around HIPAA and other factors, as well as the security space, as well as the AI and ML capabilities that we can mirror together and merge to actually create them a solution. Well, the next one's a layup. What about having a very mature data and analytic portfolio? Yeah, I'm going to take that one and say a 10 for sure. I mean, having a, having that capability, uh, you know, we've seen this maturity and evolution of the space over probably the past 15 years where we moved into this modern data age. And, and with that, we've had to mature not only the resources and the capabilities of an organization, but also how the data is used and stored and leveraged. And, and at the same time, how much data and the complexity of that data and the frequency of that data uh, going from more batch to real time. So having this the ability to understand this, this at a very, very detailed level, be able to connect the dots from source to destination to which algorithms and how they're leveraged and are you doing them privately or publicly, all these nuances of data are critical. And if, if you don't have an expertise there, you really can't even think about the other things we talked about. You have to be able to deliver um, what you're putting together. And uh, that's where I think the maturity is on the data side. Yeah, it's foundational. So what's next for Trace 3 and Tailwind? It's, it's been phenomenal so far. I mean, we're, we're three months in uh, to this journey together and, and our teams are clicking so well together. Um, we've now basically merged these two uh, superior organizations together and we are providing world-class uh, talent and capabilities to our customers. And we'll continue down that path um, really finding out what with with information for our innovation team and insights coming from that research, we're, we're driving for what's coming next so that we can be ahead of that for our customers and provide them the most optimal services available uh, in the market today. And you'll just see that continuing to mature through the things that we're publishing, uh, the, the things that uh, we are actually doing, and some of the uh, IP and new development that we're actually bringing to the market. Speaking of merging or fusing these two great organizations together, as you know, today marks our one brand launch day, a very special day where the Tailwind brand officially becomes one with the Trace 3 brand. Asher, I want to thank you so much for celebrating this monumental chapter in Trace 3 history with me. We could not be more excited for what's to come for our business, for our partners, and for our clients. Thanks for watching, everyone.